Okay guys, the first thing we're gonna do is head on over to 7zip.org and download 7zip. Your download button will be right here and I recommend the 64-bit. The link to this page will be in the description below. Now let's head over to consolegames.down10.software to download the PlayStation BIOS. The link to this page will also be in the description below. Let's go ahead and click on download and your download should start. Once it's finished, let's go up to the top right, click on the three little dots, select downloads, show in folder, let's lower the browser, and let's drag our BIOS to the desktop. Exit out. Now we need to extract that BIOS, and that was the reason we downloaded 7-Zip. To access that quick, all you need to do is right click on the file, go to 7-Zip, extract here. And now we have our extracted BIOS. We no longer need the zip file. So let's right click and delete the zip file. Now let's download our emulator and we will get that from Vim.net. The link to this page will be in the description below. Once you're here, go ahead and click on emulation layer. Scroll down to PlayStation and select EPSXE and click on the Windows logo. And your download should start. Once it's finished, go up to the top right, click on the three little dots, select download, show in folder. We can exit out of the browser and let's drag our EPSXE file to the desktop. Exit out. Now let's open that file. Welcome to the EPSXE setup. Next, choose where you would like to install EPSXE. I'm going to go ahead and change this from my C drive to my external hard drive, which is my F drive. You guys can store this wherever you like. Okay, next. Ready to install, install. Once it's complete and you wanna launch right into EPSXE, make sure this is checked and select finish. Now the first thing we're gonna do is add that BIOS to the emulator. Let's go up to config, BIOS. Now I already had a BIOS on my computer and the emulator has detected that, but let's say this is your first time using EPSXE and you wanna locate that BIOS that we downloaded on our desktop. What you wanna do is go to select and locate that BIOS on your desktop. So select desktop and the BIOS file will be scph1001.bin. Select the file and open and then hit okay. Now let's map out our controls. So let's go back up to config, control pads, port one, pad one. Now you can use your keyboard, you can use a wire controller, or you can use an Xbox One controller. I'm gonna be using the Xbox One controller, so I'm gonna go up here to this first drop down arrow, and I'm gonna select XI input. Now you're gonna see no config required. That's because when using an Xbox One controller with this emulator, it will automatically lay out your button layout for you, so you don't have to do anything. Let's go ahead and click OK. So using an Xbox One controller, the letters will take the place of the shapes. The triangle will be Y, the square will be X, the cross will be A, and the circle will be B. Now let's go into our video settings. So let's go back up to config, video if you want your games to load into full screen when you load them up then go ahead and select full screen mode let's change our desktop resolution to whatever your desktop resolution is in my case mine is 1920 by 1080 and leave the color on 32 bit for the internal resolution we can go ahead and bump this up to resolution times two as you can see resolution times four is slowest so two is right in the middle we're not gonna mess with the brightness profile. Let's go to stretching mode. If you want your games to look like they did back in the day with that four by three aspect ratio, then select four by three. If you want them to be widescreen, which I will let you know the game will be stretched, but there won't be any black bars on the side, then you can select widescreen. I'm gonna leave it at four by three. We're gonna stay on OpenGL V2 and leave the threading mode on accurate. Now let's come to the bottom and let's select V-Sync. This way your game stays in sync while you're playing and you don't experience any screen tear. Everything else here can stay at default settings. Let's click OK. And the last thing you need to do is head up to options, CPU overclocking, and we're going to change this to times two. This will prevent your games from not wanting to load or games that may load and then crash right at the beginning. 
Now let's load up a game. If you guys need to know where to get safe PS1 games from, there will be a link in the description to a video I did showing you guys where you can get safe PS1 games. Just make sure that after you download a PS1 game, that you use 7-Zip to extract that game to make it playable in EPSXE. Let's go up to File, Run ISO. I have a few games on my desktop. Let's load up Digimon Rumble Arena. You click the game and it should start up. 